High-speed rails have been around the world for over 60 years. Japan was the first to unveil it, and later on, other countries hopped on it too as well. France, China, and Spain are all operating fast-speed trains on a major scale. But surprisingly, the country which has the biggest railway network in the world, the United States, lack heavily in that department. The only fast trains in the country are the Amtrak Excella and the Brightline private trains in Florida. The Acela goes from Washington DC to Boston with a maximum speed of 150 miles per hour, but for a very short period of time. And the Brightline, which is a private operator, goes from Miami to Palm Beach. Right now, these are the only high-speed trains in America, although not for very long. America is trying to expand this to all over the country with much faster trains. That's why several high-speed rail projects have been proposed or are under construction. Firstly, the already built systems are being upgraded by Amtrak. They're putting the next generation faster trains and upgrading their tracks in order to support higher speeds. In Florida, Brightline has already extended their route to Orlando with newly built tracks allowing speeds up to 125 miles per hour. And they're also planning their second route from Las Vegas to Los Angeles with much faster trains on a completely new track. The other projects include the Los Angeles to San Francisco high-speed rail, which is under construction, and others like Dallas to Houston or Seattle to Vancouver are at earlier development stages and are likely seeking federal grants to accelerate engineering and planning rather than construction. These projects will all be bullet trains reaching speeds of 200 miles per hour. But they won't come cheap, especially for the US as they are building it for the first time. There's been a lot of obstacles in between the California project that has led to some delays, raising its cost and the completion period. But anyway, America now seems to be more interested in the concept of high-speed trains than ever before and has set aside billions of dollars for the same through their 2021 massive infrastructure bill. With that, it is sure that bullet trains are coming to the United States as well. But the main question is, will this even work? And how will it transform the car and airplane-centered America? Let's start with the current high-speed rail of America, the Acela, which is run by Amtrak, the National Passenger Railroad Company of the United States. Their Washington, D.C. to Boston service with the Acela has been pretty successful. Mostly, the whole plan was a success. And taking this as an example, we could say high-speed trains will be just fine. But you see, the United States is pretty big, and it wouldn't be fair to say that just because it's doing okay on the East Coast, it will work in all parts of the country. For example, let's say the US plan to build a high-speed train between Denver and Kansas City. What do you think will happen? Well, it will be terrible. And that's because there are few factors that determine if a high-speed train is actually needed or not. First of all, there has to be a major passenger exchange between the cities the train is serving, which compared to the Washington-Boston route, the Denver and Kansas City will have nothing. Secondly, it shouldn't be too long, because a lot of people would prefer using flights if the journey gets too long, and Denver to Kansas is almost a thousand kilometers with no major city in between. Both of these factors oppose that there can be a successful high-speed train between Denver and Kansas City, although, if you look at the Washington to Boston route, both of these factors are checked. Plus, the railway goes through literally the densest cities of America, and it connects several big cities, as well as medium-sized cities, in a span of just about 700 or 800 kilometers. So it's the perfect place for a high-speed train. But Denver and Kansas City? Not so much. So, the thing with bullet trains is, if you place them in the right place, it will work. And most likely, the routes that are proposed should be perfect. Now, when high-speed trains start operations in America, there will likely be a significant change in American transportation. The moment high-speed trains are up and running, people are going to start choosing them, and it will impact other transportation. A lot. America is the land of cars, there is no doubt about that people's mentality here has always been more leaned towards cars. The government has been putting money towards road infrastructure more than anything, and people here don't hesitate to take cars even on hundreds of kilometers of journey. So this is probably going to be changed a lot by high-speed trains. 
Since the US is so centered around cars, the country has the highest vehicle ownership percentage among big countries. Out of 1,000 people in the US, 994 own a vehicle, and the total number of vehicles is incredibly massive and also the highest in the world. This all makes the road traffic worse. The highways of LA or Miami are just getting worse and worse, and by trains, this will be eased a lot. First of all, because of traffic, people will start choosing trains more often, and once they realize how easy and time-saving their experience was, they would want to go again. And once enough people shift their transportation method from cars to trains, traffic will be much less. Now, if you think, why hasn't it happened with New York till now? Well, that's because in New York, Acela is carrying passengers who are going from New York to other cities. Acelas are not carrying people who are traveling in New York City. That's what subways do. So Acela is lowering the number of cars that are traveling on the interstates between these cities rather than cars in the city itself. That's why the streets of New York are not impacted by the Acela trains. However, if the number of cars in a city is to be decreased by trains, then the number of stations in the city where the Acela stops is to be increased, with an increase in train frequency as well. And that came down exactly what subways are for, just slower. If we take another example of Los Angeles, if the new high-speed rail cuts through the city and have multiple stations at which the high-speed rail stops, then we'll probably see a decrease in the traffic on city highways and roads. And if not, then just the number of cars on highways between LA and San Francisco or LA and Bakersfield will be affected. Now, just like on the road, the same reduction happens in the air as well. America has the biggest share in global aviation, and that includes thousands of flights every day. With trains, that will definitely be slowed down, but only short-haul domestic flights will be affected by it. Cities that have massive flight connections between them, like LA San Francisco or Houston Dallas, will be the ones with the most impact. This will cause regional or small airports to lose a lot of passengers, while the long haul or international flights on the bigger airport will stay the same. To put it into numbers, we could take the example of China. So after the introduction of their high-speed rail services, domestic air passengers decreased by 28% and the impacts were much stronger among those air routes that connect major hubs within a distance of 500 to 800 kilometers. Of course, America is not China, so 28% would be exceptional here, but we could picture at least half of that to airports where the high-speed rail will be built. But that's not the only change the trains will do. Apart from the reduced road congestion and a little bit fewer flights, high-speed rails will shift American travel habits. The same people who were taking cars will take trains, and now on medium distance trips, people will have another option to go with. But this dream is far away from now. It's not as easy as it sounds. There's going to be a thousand problems before the projects reach the completion date, and it will likely take another decade for the first high-speed train project to run smoothly on American soil. Till then, we hope that all the projects get the required funding and support from the American people and the country to expand this transportation further.